welcome back guys so in this part fourth of spl exam specimen so what we are looking at is we've been given uh, a set of exhibits and based on that we need to make a evaluation so first part was analysis of the industry and the market which dcs company is competing in using an appropriate model right the second part that we need to look at is the an evaluation of the overall performance of TCS company between 2012 and 2015 from an integrated reporting perspective, right? So what are the things that we need to take into consideration? Okay, this one as well, integrated report, right? Exhibit number three. So what is there? So we've been given a few numbers regarding financial performance, non-thingy non -fin non, uh, performance as well, right? So we need to discuss about that. So the typical answer that would be required of us is like this, okay? So governance and internal control. Governance and internal control, right? Is that the requirement though? Evaluation okay from integrated the reporting perspective, right? Okay, yeah. So introduction. In DCS case, there seem to be significant shortcomings in regard to governance structures against board principles of good governance. In particular, a listed company, the board of DCS is accountable to institutional investors. This formal investor relation function seems to be lacking at dcs and should be formalized however there are general weakness in range of governance arrangement at dcs and these weak internal controls which are key responsibility of the audit committee and they may have to they may have led to poorly managed r d policy and the ineffective capital budgeting process these specific shortcomings are as follows non-separation of chairman and ceo right that's the case which has been happening right ceo and chairman is java peria so this is a serious weakness leads to lack of independence within the board by wasting too much power in one individual who may dominate the board of DCS, the two roles are very different in nature. CEO is responsible for directing and implementing strategic plans and for leading the executive team. The chairman is responsible for ensuring that the board of the directors operates effectively. This is properly constituted and is managed impartially to encourage open and transparent discussion. These roles should be separated. So what else is not there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay so there is no lack of uh, no uh, non-executive directors right and diversity so dcs only has one independent uh, non-executive directors to scrutinize the executive directors and to exercise independence of judgment and skepticism where appropriate dcs independent uh, non-executive directors is an executive director of one of the dcs two main suppliers right that was the case So it yeah, has been governed by POD with me acting as CEO and giving me sufficient control to effectively direct the company and take strong leadership over the board. Strong leadership over the board, encouraging debate and driving the agenda. The board comprises marketing director Zulis, which is my original sales manager employed by the company, which I have known for a long time. We also have a production and IT director, Tony, who has been with the company for over 10 years. He has a strong background in data communication, hardware components. So finance director is there. He joined the company before the company was featured on National Stock Exchange. Female HR is also there uh, from a non-executive member of the board. Fortunate to appoint a safe 
negotiator of one of our two largest suppliers okay that will be a bit of conflict of interest right so so the the company should appoint uh, non-executive directors uh, who are independent and increase the diversity of the board in terms of functional expertise and business acumen and to benefit from the broader experience of those who have worked for other companies the gender balance on the board needs addressing only the hr director is female no director or senior management induction policy there seems to be no director induction process at dcs which is important in ensuring that directors and senior managers understand the mission strategic objectives cultural values of the organization introducing such a program will help integrate new senior staff into dcs and make them more immediate and help them make more immediate and valuable contributions lack of risk nominations and remunerations committee right all this committee committee are not there dcs seems to have no formal board appointed committees for the above a public limited ex company is expected to have a committee who which identifies assesses and recommends strategies to mitigate risk there is no independent committee to consider board appointments or their pay structure a particular problem related to appointments and rewards is evident from the case at the senior level they, this could have been avoided by having a formal nominations and remunerations committee to consider such appointments a key shortcoming is the failure to adequately align directors pay with long-term interest of the shareholders no one on the board is allowed share options and all are on fixed salary meaning that company performance is not aligned to their rewards a nomination committee would also address some of the problems regarding poor selection and appointment of senior candidates would also have addressed some of the problems regarding poor selection and appointment of senior candidates and the lack of succession planning right so poorly constituted audit committee the audit committee seems to be unsatisfactory for a number of reasons first there seems to be no one with any financial expertise this is this may be why costs are getting out of control most of the members are technical managers from operating core of the business this is only one uh, there is only one non-executive directors who uh, when generally accepted principles of corporate governance would recommend at least two non non-executive directors right if not more the audit committee does not seem to have proper oversight over the capital budgeting of the company or scrutinize significant expenditures on capital expenditure or research and development DCS should therefore change the constitution of the audit committee to include more entities and members with more financial expertise. It should also review the remit of audit committee to include induction responsibility for oversight of the capital budgeting process and to scrutinize the effectiveness of financial reporting processes and its relationship with external auditors. So inadequate reporting and engagement with institutional shareholders. There is a block of 30% institutional shareholders who seem to be largely ignored or treated as if they were like other private and individual shareholder. There is a key weakness as the institutional block vote is significant and if the shareholding is withdrawn or sold this could create uncertainty in the market and a serious reduction in share price dcs needs to create formal reporting and communication channel with its institutional investors to ensure that they continue to engage with and invest in dcs right so the third requirement was
So under the strategic and resource allocation heading uh, in the October board report, the possibility of TCS companies supplying and supporting these technologies as cloud computing and big data analytics is referred to to accompany the consultancy report of presentation is needed about the exploration of such new technologies. Prepare information for two presentation slides to be presented to DCS board, including relevant bullet points and supporting notes, identifying key benefits and identifying main opportunities presented by big data analytics to DCS company and its customers. Professional maps are available for demonstrating communication skills and highlighting the key points to include in the slides for clear supporting notes. Right, uh, strategy allocation, which exhibit is that? Mm -hmm. October board meeting, right, exhibit four. So the report is based on information obtained from all like reviews of TCS under several headings. The report highlighting risk opportunities and future outlook for DCS. It also focuses on allocation on strategy and resource allocation, highlighting a key strategy decision which the board will need to make in their future. Risks and opportunities. What are the specific risks and opportunities which affect TCS ability to create value over the short medium and long term right so the international market for data communication components uh, started to saturate and decline for data communication components right for the supply and support of contracts for specialized it network systems we are now finding it increasingly difficult and costly to maintain a required level of network support it is getting harder to recruit high caliber staff to dcs the headquarter of TCS, although a modern site, is in geographical location which is unattractive to relocate. The system support side of the business are currently overstayed, overstayed, overstretched because key management staff has been head on debt mm -hmm. or taken early retirement. And then lenders are recently been quite willing to lend TCS additional long term funding at a competitive interest rate but are now tightening their credit lines to the company placing covenants on us to keep gearing within acceptable limits they are also increasing interest rate to compensate for the additional financial risk it is unlikely that any future growth or investment can be financed from further debt we need to use our considerable cash reserves or utilize internally generated funds cost of capital is 12 percent right Future outlook. So DCS uh, manufactures approximately 50% of all data communication components used in its own products. The rest of the complete components, including semiconductor microprocessors, are bought from two MNCs. These suppliers have since 2006 become the key players in the market through a succession of mergers and acquisitions, where previously there were many suppliers with all with a much smaller market share recently serious production problems have resulted from periodic component shortages from the ski suppliers creating significant delays in manufacturing assembly and customer deliveries right and one of our recently acquired oem customers accounts for 40 percent of the sales in this area diversification of customer is also needed so marketing forecast for 2016 uh, and beyond indicates strong growth from supply and sales support for specialized IT management services to currently installed networks in the domestic financial sector rather than from manufacture of components to OEMs or to installation of new networks to large companies. The other potential growth area is in providing cloud computing data analytics to SMEs, right? Including DCS, there are only three companies which provide this specially service in paid in. So, uh, strategy allocation, strategy and resource allocation. We need an appropriate exercise for the three to five years. Our current trends are looking at approximately 10 on 10 percent year on year decline in our revenue for the next three years. 
at this forthcoming board meeting we need to discuss and decide best strategy for the company two strategies uh, realign business to make it rest reliant on high volumes high margin components low margin components and reallocate resources from data communication segment to a high value added high added value sector of network management and support we need to further experts such as cloud computing big data right which seem to offer lower cost data storage better understanding of uh, customer preference and ability to be sold product and services we need to refocus on core capability in data communications components manufacturing area where we have expertise experience and where most of our turnover is currently generated all right so based on this they should identify the following things candidates may approach these slides differently but mainly main benefits and opportunities mm, should identify fall under the following main headings cost reduction more sophisticated analysis of customer data including customer behavior sentiments and preference faster and better decision making r d analysis for new products and services right slide one bullet points sentiment analysis soft surveillance and cost consumer behavior tracking open communication challenge with clients predictive analytics which can monitor inventory levels and ensure product availability analysis of customers purchasing behavior notes as an dcs operates in a country with 75 percent of the population connected to internet and presumably purchasing a significant of the proportion of their product and services online dcs can sell data analytics capability to its clients its clients it can do this by showing them how to use this capability to come uh, to capture store and process data from their consume from their customers by developing sophisticated marketing analytics with big data DCS clients can properly evaluate their own marketing performance gain insights into customers purchasing pattern discern key market trends and permit them to make evidence-based marketing decisions slide two further opportunities of big data analytics potential to unlock significant value ability to collect more accurate and detailed performance information allows ever narrow segmentation sophisticated analysis can substantially improve decision making big data can be used to develop next generations of product and services right so that's the opportunities So big data analytics makes information about DCS clients more transparent and allows DCS customer to collect more accurate and timely information at the fraction of the cost of hosting expensive architectures such as, such as um, data warehouses and allows DCS clients considerable cost savings using cloud computing capability or open source software such as Hadoop clusters for storing and processing large amounts of data using this and thorough through uh, data mining using social and business networking data dcs clients can undertake a much more sophisticated analysis of their customers and therefore much more precisely tailor their product and services allowing valuable insights which otherwise remain hidden and, un and unlock more customer value the other key opportunities is to allow dcs clients to develop bespoke products for their customer based on the precise needs and customer behavior right so that's for c and then what we've been asked in d so you have noted from the information you have gathered that dcs company has an increasing carbon footprint which it estimates in total but is failing to control adequately as a part of consensus what you are considering uh, recommending to dcs company commissions a specialist environment and sustainability consultancy company to assess the issues 
concise section of consultancy report which constructs the case for commissioning an environmental and sustainability audit of TCS company from both financial and environmental perspectives suggestive ways in which consultants might assess DCS companies manages to become more sustainable in management of TCS companies carbon footprint right so recommendations as a consultant right so environment and sustainability become more prominent at DCS uh, when it was a private company it would have been more flexibility regarding corporate citizenships and a private company is not visible to general public as far as its social and environmental policies are concerned however a public limited company is expected to take into account environmental capital in its strategies and policies tcs has a reputational stake in this it also has a financial stake because a carbon footprint which is not controlled usually leads to financial inefficiencies as well as environmental costs DCS would gain it, uh, benefits from the expertise of reputable consultancy firms which specializes in environmental and carbon control. They would need to ensure that DCS is not accused of greenwashing by paying lip service to green issues but visibly reducing their carbon footprint. They would analyze DCS value chain from its suppliers, its inbound logistics to its manufacturing processes and to its outbound logistics. This consultants would examine from top to bottom the policies, processes, and procedures of the company. They can advise on the carbon content of raw material and components on how to be more efficient in ordering in production, avoiding or reducing waste, improving the quality control and recycling capabilities. They would advise on carbon offset programs, ethical sourcing, green manufacturing, more sustainable travel practices, travel policies and about logistics of delivering their product and providing their services to customers. For example, having to send staff all over the country and to the nearby continent has a carbon cost but also financial cost. Another explicit financial cost which DCS must take into account is the proposed carbon tax which will add further cost. It already uh, relatively narrow margins on the data communication components business. These consultants could end up helping DCS not only to reduce and control their carbon footprints at the micro level but also their tangible cost and potential tax liabilities. Right. okay so we will do this much for this particular uh, session so we will cover the next second part of the question in another part okay so until next time bye bye